I'm huge into music, it, and I mean, I, I started when I was like, you know, 12, like into like hair metal bands, like Rad and Quiet Riot and stuff like that. And I remember the first bands I heard that totally changed my worldview were like Megadeth and Metallica and Slayer. And then I heard punk rock, and when you first get into punk rock, it's kind of not cool to like metal. So I kind of transitioned straight to punk rock. And plus, when you're a teenager, punk rock speaks a lot more to you. So I was listening to punk rock. I was, I was going to see punk rock bands a lot. I go to DC all the time. There were there were smaller clubs in DC, but especially in those days, the Mary and Barry years were bad. The cops were so crooked that they gave DC enough money to to double the police force in two years. They didn't even run background checks. They had wanted felons in other states who were now DC police officers. So DC was pretty bad. So there were some clubs. They were in really sketchy neighborhoods. You know, that's all that punk clubs could afford. But I always had to see bands. I didn't care where it was, I had to go see the bands. I remember the kind of main one, like the CBGBs in DC, was 930 Club. And I saw I saw everybody there. I saw GBH, I saw L7, I saw Helmet, I saw Smashing Pumpkins when they weren't even signed anything yet. You know, I, I saw a bunch of bands there. That was a huge influence on everything I did. I wanted to like do artwork for bands, but I didn't really know how. So I remember I talked to Tim Yohanna from Maximum Rock and Roll, and they were in California. So I, I just shot him. I think I, I, I wrote him a letter. I didn't ha even have a computer at that point. And he wrote me back to say he loved my artwork, and he wanted me to do a cover for them and do illustrations for this massive article inside their magazine. So I did cover. He didn't like it. I did another cover, he didn't like it. And by that point, my job was as a bike messenger, so I'd be biking 10 hours a day, come home, and draw, draw, draw. And it was kind of disappointing when he didn't like the first two that I did, that I spent, you know, collectively between the two, at least 40 hours working on. But then the third one, he loved, so we did that. And then, because I did that, some other bands took notice, and I started doing stuff for, um, there was a band called More Complete. The full name was More Complete Psychosis, um, but I did stuff for them. Uh, I remember I did stuff for Purr, I did stuff for Koshari. I went to art school, and my art teacher, he was really complimentary of my stuff. And he said, if you want a career, you've got to move to New York. So I moved to New York, and I was thinking, I'm going to be a comic artist. But I didn't get a job as a comic artist right away. And when I finally did get an interview with them, they were huge letdown. They paid almost nothing, they made a ton of work. But I was like, okay, what else can I do with my artwork? Bands are always broke. They always want artwork, they love somebody who does artwork, they're always broke. So I go talk to the band, talk to the band members. The really important bands that weren't even from the area who were touring, I, after they play a gig, I go up and I talk to them and I try and convince them that I should do artwork for them. I was going to a lot of um, shows at CBGB's and Coney Allen High, um, and Castle Heights and stuff like that. And I had a lot of friends who were in bands. One of my favorite bands, Cole West, was there. They played at Coney Allen High. I talked to them after that show. That's how I did artwork for them. Um, and I gave uh, Sean Ingram, the singer from Cole West, I gave the first tattoo ever. Like, at the time, I was still learning how to tattoo. And I tattooed, it was like a, a skateboarding symbol on the inside of his arm, like in red ink. And it was pretty big. I did the album cover for them. They were one of the only bands that paid me for an album cover. I was doing the music stuff as I started tattooing. When I first started tattooing, you know, that's the most money I'd ever made. Like before that I worked as like a dishwasher and like a cook and a, a waiter. I'm a horrible waiter. So some waiters make a lot of money. I didn't make a lot of money. I remember when I started tattooing, I made half my rent in one day. So I was like, I can't believe this is so much money. So I didn't even care at that point, you know, if bands paid me. It, you know, before I was worried about like paying rent and paying bills and stuff. Now I could pay rent and bills. I was just happy to do artwork for bands. And so I, I was like, I was working at flash shops in the city. And while I was working at the flash shops, I'd have downtime. Like if you weren't banging out tattoos, you know, I, I'd be working on paintings. I had everything set up. So I'd be working on tattoo, working on a painting, working on tattoo, working on a painting. Security Records, they just started up and they were like a hardcore label and they put out a compilation, Unsound was on it, there, there were a bunch of other um, decently large bands that were on it, and he wanted me to do the front and the back, and I said, what should I do? He said, anything you want. 
so which was great. Indecision, I remember when I first met Indecision, they all lived in Brooklyn. Um, I went down and met them in a diner in Brooklyn and, and we were talking, we were discussing everything. I remember Justin Marino was really into my stuff. He was like, oh, you're gonna be like our Raymond Petty Bond. And uh, I'm a big Black Flag fan, so I'm not I'm not a huge fan of Raymond Petty Bond style, but I definitely like his subject matter. And I understood what he meant by that. And of course I, I was I was on a high horse when he wanted me to be the Raymond Petty Bond. So I did like some short covers for them. Um, I did some illustrations for like flyers and for ads for them. And I remember they got signed by a new label. There's a new label out um, called MIA Records. They, they put out like a string of releases and then they folded. But I remember when that new label came out and they asked me to do their album cover and I just got the Coalesce album cover. And Coalesce is one of my favorite bands. So like I, I, I don't think I have time guys. I'm sorry. Um, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I did a lot of stuff with them. Shy Lude was one of my favorite bands, and I remember I saw them live, and afterwards I went to talk to Matt Fox, and I said, yeah, I really like your band, I'd like to do some artwork for you. Um, I had a little portfolio, like uh, I had a mill cover on it, I, it, it looked all slick because I was interviewing with like Penguin Books and DC Comics, and so it was my professional portfolio of artwork, so I showed it to him, he was impressed, he really liked it. He's like, yeah, yeah, we'd love for you to do some artwork. A lot of the stuff I did for Shy Lude, I did while I was tattooing. I was working on this whole painting, and I was about 35 hours into it when it came down with brain cancer. So I called Matt Fox from an ICU bed and said, hey man, I have brain cancer. And he was super surprised. He was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I was like I'm going to finish your painting. He's like, just get better. I'm like, no, I really want to finish your painting. Even if I die, I want to finish your painting. They had a side project band called Zombie Apocalypse, and they asked me to do a cover for that. I said, what do you want? He's like, oh, we don't care. So I did uh, a scene from the book Death Scenes, you know, and like, um, it, they're old police photos from like the 1930s. So I, I like juiced it up a little bit and colorized it. He's like, oh, it's too horrifying. Nobody will buy it out. I was like, Okay, so then he picked uh, another painting I'd done. That I would say it's like pretty close to as gruesome. Um, about the first guy taking him for a ride. Like they cut his lips off, they cut his tongue out, and they dumped him in the river, you know, with concrete shoes. And they really wanted to use that instead. So I said, okay, you can use that. Oh, well, if these bands are still open, maybe the bigger bands will be... I remember I even wrote Megadeth at one point, but the guy who does Megadeth album covers is pretty awesome. So, you know, that, that's some pretty heavy competition there. They didn't get back to me. Um, I remember I, I wrote to Obituary too, but they'd just broken up. Music kind of kept me a lot. I remember the band Dead Guy, which is still one of my favorite bands. Um, I, I must listen to that album, like, every other day. And I remember Tim Singer, the the singer for Dead Guy. I remember I got a hold of him and I said, your band kept me alive in my 20s. You know, if it wasn't for your band, <laughs> there would be no more me. Um, and it's like, oh, he was really nice. He was like, oh, thank you so much. But it's true. <laughs> 